Lachlan, this is my Alpha GT and uh, this video covers what I've done with the bypass valve that I've just completed. So for those that haven't followed this before, uh, this is a supercharged and turbocharged engine and uh, up until now I have been running it permanently as supercharged and turbocharged but what I'd like to do is bypass the supercharger after a certain pound of boost and really just use the supercharger to get the turbo to spool up. So taking a bit of a closer look you can see that uh, we've got a GD3540 with a 106 rear on a 2 litre engine uh, and typically without the supercharger that turbo really struggles to make a PSI of boost before 5000 RPM. Um, to be honest I've never really been able to get it to make any decent boost whatsoever. Uh, so the reason I've put a large turbo on is so, so that I can get uh, very good efficiency at 25 PSI. Um, also uh, I suppose the uh, disadvantage that comes with that is no boost down low. So if you can increase the exhaust uh, gas flow uh, enough down low to spool the big turbo, i.e. the supercharger, then uh, you can use this turbo and this turbo will make boost at 2000 RPM in this current configuration. If I go over to the other side, it's, all, it's a bit difficult to see the supercharger on this car, but it is in there. You get down in there, you'll see that there's an SC14 supercharger off of a Toyota Crown from Japan market. Uh, it is clutched and that clutch can be engaged and disengaged with the computer. So currently the uh, engine is running with that permanently engaged and the disadvantage of that is this supercharger is really only good for 150 kilowatts of oils so and maybe sort of 15 psi and at that temperature, uh, that boost it's making um, nasty amounts of uh, heat and uh, I don't have space for a second intercooler so what do you do if you don't want the supercharger to run all the time, you bypass it um, and get hopefully the best of both worlds so that's what I've just completed my bypass, well maybe if we look at what the flow is first you've got the turbo up the front is an intercooler that runs across through the intercooler underneath the car into the supercharger then out of the supercharger as you can see there and currently straight into the inlet I do have water methanol injection uh, plumbed in I just haven't run it as yet so I wanted to run the uh, bypass valve first because I see that making the big, biggest gains so now if we look at where the uh, bypass is plumbed in We've got the bottom of the intercooler comes out and would normally go to the supercharger but also it's bypassed up into the bypass valve. Coming over into the inner guard you can see I've got a bypass valve set up in there and uh, the necessary uh, actuator to open and close that valve. So now what we have is the ability to bypass the supercharger once the turbo is pulled up. So I intend to run this configuration such that when I hit 20 psi the bypass valve opens, the uh, boost then drops on the supercharger and I'm making roughly about 10 psi from the turbo. That turbo then needs to quickly bring back up, get back up to 20 psi. Um, to, in order to continue making the horsepower but now you've got the benefit of all of the flow going through your intercooler uh, and through a much higher efficiency compressor so uh, the way I've done that is to use a, uh, uh, a basically a wastegate actuator plumbed onto a, via, a valve which is my bypass valve and that opens when it sees a set pressure this ball valve stops that valve from seeing a set pressure so there's no creep on the valve and when I hit my preset of 20 PS, uh, 10 psi on this valve uh, this, this uh, then bypasses and the actuator sees the 10 psi 
and begins to open that bypass valve. At 10 psi it's probably 3 quarters open and as the supercharger, the turbo makes its uh, additional 10 psi, it's fully open. Um, not ideal but hopefully uh, sufficient. There will be a little bit of a uh, um, disadvantage of not having the valve fully open immediately, it's like closing your throttle. Um, I also have to turn the supercharger off at that point, that exact point. So what I've done is uh, I've taken the ball valve and then I've uh, plumbed in a Hobbs pressure, pressure switch which is normally uh, normally would turn the supercharger off right from the get-go. It's normally open. Uh, I've used a relay to make it so that it's reversed logic. So now when the supercharger uh, when, when the uh, bypass valve sees 10 psi from the turbo, it will also turn off the supercharger. Now I do run the supercharger from the computer as well, but the computer only sees intake pressure. So in order to run the supercharger off of um, the same condition as what the bypass valve sees, it needs to see the pressure uh, that the bypass valve sees, not the intake pressure. I only have one pressure input onto my computer, so hence the manual approach. It's still very tunable, um, and it still allows you to, over the top of that, run logic on the computer to turn the supercharger on and off, you know, based on temperatures or RPMs, etc. So that is the general gist. Um, it's kind of basic, but complicated when you start to try and get it to work um, properly. Anyway, I hope that was as clear as mud. Cheers.